Hi guys, this is Mario the Perpetual Traveler. All right, 10 years ago exactly, I have made that video, how to solo dive and why you should solo dive. Now, 10 years later, if you read all the comments that people have left me over the years, everybody that told me a whole bunch of stuff pre before a dive, after a dive, call me crazy during a dive and so on and so forth, was you'd say that I should be dead by now. Well, I'm not. Now, lucky me. But the point is, I don't want to talk about the politics. The argument that I've made the most over the year always been the same. If you're a petty instructor that dives with eight newbies that have never dove before on their first open water dive, you're literally diving solo with eight potential problems, eight things that can go wrong. Something goes wrong for you, it goes wrong for you know all of them because you have to bring everybody back at the surface. Now, in this course or this video, okay, I want to talk to you about why I'm still solo diving 10 years later and I'm going to talk to you about the things that I have perfected, the things that I have learned, uh, why do I think that, you know, at what level you should start solo diving, what you, why you should do it. Now, as a perpetual traveler, the reason why I'm diving solo the most is the fact that I don't know anybody when I get to a new place. Also, I travel a lot in developing nations. So maybe you can go to a dive shop where I'm gonna go to dive in one day for $70, $80, even in Vietnam or Jamaica, or whatever. Not everybody, especially not the locals, would have $80 to go and pop on dive. So I cannot really easily find myself a buddy to go dive with. Another thing too, sometimes I wanna dive in places that people don't want to go uh, or don't feel the interest. If you can only go dive a few, you know, whatever, a dozen times a year, maybe diving in a quarry or maybe going to dive in a lake or just I saw something by the, by the shore and I'm like, hmm, hey, I have my gear in the, in the back. I still have a, a lot of air in my tanks. Why don't I just go and put my, my suit up and just go dive, park the car and go and jump? That kind of thing I can't do always with a buddy. The other reason also is I've had my misfortune of buddies over my 20 years of scuba diving and personally, I think that sometimes you, you get a lot of bad buddies and if you're gonna go dive once or twice, or let, let's say you're in Mexico, you dive three hours to go to a cenotes, for example, so it's a full day event, okay? You're gonna come back at the resort at six at night. You leave at, let's say, seven in the morning. Three hours going there, you're gonna dive a few hours, you're gonna, eat a little, then you're gonna make your way back, you're gonna go back to the dive shop to give back the equipment, they're gonna bring you back to the resort. If you've done it before, you understand it takes a long time, two, three dives sometimes. Now, what if you're coupled with somebody that burned through their oxygen or their air or their nitrox, whatever they're using, like this? What if the person is a master scuba diver but has not dived in 15 years? Um, maybe he lied on his credentials. Uh, maybe he's just not good. Maybe he's not experienced enough. He has not done it enough. Whatever the reason is, okay, he has health issues, whatever. Uh, his tank has issues, name it. The thing is, you're gonna ruin that dive because you're with the buddy. Technically, you have to take care of the buddy. You have to come back. You, you cannot just like, okay, so the guy goes, I'm up and I'm like, I'm okay, bye-bye. You can't do that, at least, you shouldn't do it. So personally, I prefer solo diving. And also the other thing that I would say that if, if you buddy dive, okay, I think you should, I'm not saying you should lie on your credential because if you say you're open water when you're actually in advanced or you have your rescue or even you did the master scuba diver challenge or your dive master even worse, um, you should say you're open water. You should say the minimum that you need to go on the water. The reason why is if you don't, they're gonna pair you with the newbies. The reason why is because it's a psychological thing. You're a dive master and you just see a fellow dive master right next to you, somebody who has a lot of experience, and you're like, oh wow, if he can take half the group and I take half the group, then wow, my day is much easier. The problem with that approach is, is I'm not here to work, okay? Like my friend says, I'm not a shore bitch. I'm here to dive. If I go with a bunch of friends, yes, of course I'll take care of my friends, but if I pay a certain amount and I'm expecting to have people to take care of the people that cannot dive or people that have not, you know, 
the open waters or whatever, or some people are doing their courses or doing one more dive to get some, uh, you know, extra achievement or whatever, or extra levels, that's, that's their problem, not mine. So there we are. So basically that's why I solo dive. What can go wrong in a dive? Like where's your critical point of failure? Well, first entanglement. And now we're talking not diving, we're talking literally solo diving. If I'm entangled and I have a buddy, my buddy can unentangle me or help me out. Um, I have also a bit of air to rely on if ever, you know, I stay underwater too long. My buddy can actually go back to the surface, pick up more tanks, bring more tanks down, can go alert somebody, can leave me a tank and see so to the surface. Yeah, like that's going to happen. But the point is, is that there's a bunch of ways of doing that. And actually, uh, when I'm going to talk to you about what the minimum is for solo diving, leaving your equipment at the bottom at 100 feet and going back on your own is part of that. Um, so my point is, is that entangling yourself. So you're going to get in, in a wreck or something, or you got to get at the bottom. You might just get caught in ropes, or you're doing cave diving, or cenotes, not really cave. And you can get a bit of issues there. That's one of the issues. Uh, regulator free flow. So... This actually I fix in a way that I have a double tank and I'm going to use two regulators, okay? Two separate regulators. If I have a freeze, if I have a free flow, I'm going to click, close one side and, and then I'm going to either bridge the tank or I'm going to do whatever. If I have a rupture of, the, of one of the, um, the, the O-ring and the tank start free flowing from there, I can close that tank and use the other tank. So that's one of the reasons why I'm using doubles. That's fixing pretty much the regulator issue. Also, I have a buddy. I'm not diving, solo diving. In reality, I'm diving with my buddy and I'm gonna present it to you right now. This is my buddy. Now, my buddy is very cool. Okay, first of all, it clips to my, uh, to my BCD very easily and it's a full tank. Okay, this is a European one, so this is six liters. It equals to about 80, um, 80 in the... Uh, so that's an 80, basically, close enough. So I have 3,000 PSI, can do very much everything I want, 15 bars out of this. And the advantage is, is that it has also its own regulator. So if I have any issues, then I can take that one as well. So now I have three regulators when I dive, if I go in that configuration. Also, you'll notice here, this one has a knife on the tank. And I also have another knife right, at, right next to my air intake. So I have two knives. So entanglement, less likely. If I dive with my uh, dry suit, I'm going to have uh, shearing scissors, which is the same one that nurses would use to cut through jeans or whatever, uh, in one of my pockets. And I'll generally dive with another knife. So at this level, now it's very tough to run out of air. Because what do you have a buddy for? in reality, right? When you dive together, what do you have a buddy? The chances you're going to pass out underwater and your buddy is going to have to bring you back up is rare. On top of that, to be frank, if the person doesn't have his rescue, may as well that you don't have a buddy. Because honestly, even during my, my rescue, um, the instructor told me to fake uh, just drifting away and whatever. And Honestly, I almost died there because the guy just literally shoved my regulator down my throat, didn't even bother purging it, which he should have, because then if he doesn't purge it, I can't breathe. If I don't have air in my lung to actually exhale, I won't be able to clear the regulator to take more air in. And basically, I'm going to die that right there. On top of that, I was at 48, 50 feet, whatever. The guy literally presses BCD, didn't know exactly how much you would need, and on top of that, it takes time for the air to, re, to, to, you know, to fill your, your BCD and to start your progression. After that, it doubles every, uh, every atmosphere, so bang. We pop to the surface like a corkscrew. If I had not yelled the entire time, I would, lie, I would have long overextension, so, and I would have died. So my point being is, if you have somebody that's a bad buddy, somebody in a rescue situation where he doesn't know how to rescue you, honestly, then you're done. It's not going to be any use for you. So personally, this is my buddy. This one is not going to fail me. 
And even if he were to fail, well, I still have my main tank, worst case scenario, I can still go back to the surface. So that's another of my main thing. Okay. Okay. All right. So now here's that's not the wing that I use normally with uh, with the double, but I thought I'm going to show you this because it was already here and it was easy to do. So normally your octopus is here, so you're going to have within your triangle, you're going to have your octopus. I don't like that. I use this. Now this points right here. You put it inside here, and you get it here. So if I want to, I'm going to grab here. Clack. I'm not going to bother like, to find out where it is. Okay? That requires somehow, it's, it's a bit awkward with my left hand. With my right hand, is sort of OK. Here, I can access with both. It's in the middle of my body. It's middle of my throat. That's easy. The whistle, whatever, if I get to the surface, but it's not really useful. Now, this is my, to go back to the surface, this is my knife. So it's very easy and convenient and fast access. So that's my second knife. It cannot be better located for me to grab it with either hand. So no matter how I get entangled, I can still get that knife out extremely easily. So that's another way that you can organize this. Now, these have, um, of course, um, they have pockets for weights quick release weight. You're not going to solo dive with that likely. If you do, that's fine. I don't have a problem with this. But if you do with a plate, if you dive with a plate, you're not going to have those release because the plate's going to have some weight in it. So therefore, you're going to be, uh, you're going to require a lot more air to go back to the surface, right? You won't be able to release your, your weights. So what I recommend that at that point to have is a lift bag. Now, that might sound crazy, and by the way, I have my reel, uh, yeah, at the bottom on the other side, I have my reel here. But uh, yeah, so, and this is, um, and normally I would have a second reel in my, uh, my dry suit if I use my, my, my DUI dry suit. Now, this, yes, you can bring a bicycle from the bottom of the water, and that's very cool. However, you can bring yourself back up as well. So if you have an ultimate failure, so let's say I have a flooding in my, in my uh, dry suit or my dry suit has a failure, puncture, whatever. I can use this one, okay, to compensate. If my wing cannot compensate to bring me back up considering this tank is full and the other one or whatever, and I need to go back to the surface fast, I can use the lift bag. It's very easy. And I can use my lift bag with anything, right? I basically can fill it either with my two regulators from my doubles or I can fill it with my regulator from my extra tank. It doesn't take much and you're going to start going back to the surface. There's a purge at the top. Uh, it's a very, very easy uh, and this one is actually normally on my wing so I can access it on the side. I just pull down and I have access to it on both ways, both sides. So this is really another thing that you want to have when you solo dive. The idea here is to be completely self-sufficient. On the training level, okay, when or what you need or what should you use um, to go solo diving or what's the minimum that you should have uh, when you're going to go solo dive? Okay. Um, you don't have to have your dive master, but there's one, um, let's say, uh, requirement to pass your dive master, which I really, really love, which I think you should practice on. And I don't think you should solo dive until you master that one, because I'll be very frank with you. I did try this with a lot of my friends and the number of my friends that can do it. Well, there's three of them. Actually, two of them are dive master and beyond. And one is a particularly good diver and he has advanced and he still can do it. So that's great. But that's three friends out of everybody I've met that I've tried it with must be 100 people. 3% of the people can actually do this one. It sounds ridiculous, and this is the, the equipment exchange. You need to be very advanced to do equipment exchange, but more importantly, you need to be tremendously calm underwater. Now, what is the equipment exchange? You can check it online. 
Uh, and I'll uh, probably try to do a video of an exchange if, I can, if my buddy can come visit me in Jamaica. Right now I'm, I'm here and I'm going to be here for the rest of the winter. If I can try to, to, to get somebody to do it with me, uh, I'll film it. But the equipment exchange is this. You start two people facing each other at the bottom of a pool or a, or a lake or whatever. Uh, you're going to have one regulator for both people. So you buddy breed to begin with. And at the end of the dive, you have to have everything exchange completely. Okay. You could do wetsuit. Listen, if you're not the same size, not going to work. Or if you have a, uh, and I, I don't really recommend you do that with a dry, but anyway, point is, is that at the limit of the, of the, of the wetsuit, do your complete equipment exchange. So that's fin change, that's gonna be your mask, that's gonna be, uh, if you have a hood, you do the hood, that's gonna be your regulator, your BCD, everything, everything changes. At the end of the dive, you guys are going back together. If you wanna double it, to try to really push it, then you reverse everything and then you go back as you were. This is tough, okay? Because you have to hold your, the, your buddy close to you if there's current or, or, or you have to because then if you need to have the regulator, you'll be able to. So you're gonna take a breath. You're gonna keep your breath for 30 seconds or whatever. You're gonna remove one or two pieces of equipment. He's gonna remove two, three pieces of equipment. You're gonna give him the regulator. He's going to breathe, he's going to give you the regulator, and you're going to exchange. You have to be tremendously calm to do that, and trust me, most people fail. Also, the reason why is because some of the, um, the failure points are in very basic things. I saw people fail their mask, putting back their mask together. Uh, I see people having issues when they remove their mask, the, the air from the, the regulator goes into their nose and they go, they freak out with that. So that's why I, I do dive a lot without my mask sometimes, just you know to practice my, me doing that. Um, then there's a lot of ways that you're gonna, you're gonna try to do that, that exercise. Once you manage this one, then you're good. Um, I will say do your rescue. The reason why is rescue is also a lot about you. Okay, uh, your rescue dive teaches you a lot about self, uh, you know, self-sustaining your, yourself in the water, basically like um, how to, first of all, mend your own person before you actually rescue someone else. And this is very important because very often also in, in solo dive, uh, sorry, in rescue diving, you're going to somewhat be solo diving. Let me explain that. Okay, and I know Patty will say no, 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 but that's BS. Okay, I, I did two rescues in my lifetime, and I will say it, two active, real, true rescue, not practices. And you will have, let's say, some, some divers that didn't come back. We need to go find that diver. You have five people, four people going into the water. Are you going to stick all together? Are you going to be two buddy, buddy pairs, when you can just scatter around and find a person faster? Obviously, you're going to scatter. So... That's another thing that you're gonna do. Um, you know, you're gonna do your rescue. I think that's really worth it. Uh, should you wait until you have 50 dive, 100 dive? Not necessarily. It depends how good you are with yourself. Okay, how, how relaxed you are underwater. Another thing that you want to try to have. Um, this is uh, just a buoyancy rope. If you're diving from shore, rope. Uh, if you're diving from a boat. Leave this in the water. That's going to give you 15 extra meters. Um, that's going to be um, allowing you. And actually, this actually it worked for me once. Um, I was actually basically going out of the water, and I sort of like started thinning. The current was very strong, and I, I actually missed my ladder, and I kept drifting. It's okay. I had this at the back of the boat. I grabbed it. I pulled myself back in. Um, I have a. I dive with a canister light most of the time, and it's always in my in my dry suit but have extras now a lot of them these are cheap but uh, they're they're really uh, they're cheap but they're good enough to have in plenty and I only I don't normally have three four in my in, in my BCD so or my uh, my my wing or or inside my drive suit pockets so this is useful um, what else the rest is fancy equipment you don't need to have a, a wash computer you don't it's not necessary okay the, the rest is just Making sure that, you know, of course you don't exceed, you do your plateau, try to use nitrox, you have to calculate your mix. Nothing else there change, okay? Nothing else 
would change from being buddy diving and solo diving. And there's no, there's no difference here when it comes to, uh, you know, like your tank, the number of air and whatever you have in there, then your nitrox or whatever you do, uh, your depth, whatever you're doing, okay? Uh, if you're an advanced diver, you go to 100 feet, uh, 30 meters. If you're a deep diver, maybe you go to 40. Um, you know, like if you don't have your certification for deep, you can still go to 40, okay? That, but you might narc. Um, I normally in cold water, even with my dry suit, narc at 130, okay? This is me. Uh, that's basically my limit. I know my limit. When I'm alone, I will try not to exceed 120 because I know myself. Um, another thing that you want to do, and this one I recommend you do with a buddy the first time or the second time you do it, uh, because it's, <laughs> it's a bit tough. You need to get back to the surface without your equipment. This is part of a requirement for solo diver when you do the TDI tech diver solo diver course, which I've done. Um, so basically, I, it's like equipment exchange without equipment, okay? I went to the bottom of, uh, at 100 feet, the bottom of the St. Lawrence River, um, and basically my, uh, my guy just literally let me get out of my equipment. I took my last breath and I left my equipment. Now, why do you, and he brought it back. Now, why do you do that? Again, entanglement, okay? If you get entangled in the water, okay, you might be able to get yourself free. You may not be able to free your equipment. When that happens, you need to be able to go back to the surface without your gear. Of course, my buddy followed me the entire way, and if I was really, really in trouble with the seesaw, he would, you know, I would have been able to jump on him and grab the regulator. I didn't, I didn't need it. Seesaw is amazing. It's like magic. Uh, every single atmosphere, you redouble the air on your lungs. You can go fast to the surface so long as you are sound, you know, the entire time. So honestly, this is a piece of, uh, of advice that I say, like do your actual solo diver course with somebody. There's a bunch of books on solo diving, or at least there's the TDI one. That's just very, very good. I recommend you read that one. Uh, again, it's all about if you can d body dive, you can solo dive. Um, just you have to be more mindful of this. If, um, if you dive with oxygen, obviously oxygen poisoning below 20-ish feet. Uh, don't dive with pure, pure oxygen. You know, like this is just a logic, okay, right? If you make a mistake and you grab your, uh, your O2, nobody will bring you back to the surface. You're alone. You're going to just pass out there and bye-bye. So that's the kind of thing. If you're not sure about these kinds of, you know, procedures, then have them. Uh, know them, learn them, and practice them before you do it. Um, you can start solo diving the same way you, op you do your open water. Do it in the pool. Uh, practice, uh, practice a few exercises. Practice your skills. Uh, make sure that you know you, that you have all your skills. Like I said, a lot of failures in body diving, and uh, sorry, in body uh, equipment exchange, is the mask. Sounds stupid, but this you should know from your first pool when you went in the water the first time for the first skill. That was open water, virtually your first one of the 20 skills that you have to master to become an open water. That you fail that one when you buddy dive at the master uh, dive master level, that's bad, okay? And that's another reason why I'm telling you, solo diving, sometimes if you're very good, if you're comfortable, if you're, and by good here, I'm not necessarily mean, because it's not, it doesn't require extreme amount of skill to buddy dive or solo dive. But what I mean is to be extremely calm. If you panic, this is where you're done because you're alone. You cannot panic, right? So that's it. Other than that, the rest of, is all the same. And do it safely, do it responsibly. If you feel that you're not well that day, then don't. Uh, and it's the same thing. It's the it's, it's same thing as body diving, right? And you should know. But the biggest thing is know yourself and know what you can do. The last one I want to talk about is should you dive with a wetsuit or a dry suit? Well, if you're really good with your dry suit and you have a very good dry suit, then that's fine. But I have a $5,000 DUI suit and I still can flood. And if I flood and I get cold underwater, I still have to abort my dive. Uh, maybe I'm gonna have, you know, it's gonna be tougher for me to go back to the, to the surface and so on and so forth. Um, you know, squeeze, solo diving or, or body diving, you gotta squeeze, you gotta squeeze. The, um, the idea is that at the very least, the wetsuit 
has an advantage. It's less comfortable for most people, but what I mean is, at the very least, it's one less point of failure. A lot of points of failure on a, on a dry suit, okay? It could be any, any number of your, uh, of your purges that can screw up. It can also be, uh, you know, you might free flow with your dry suit. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that may happen. So if you're alone, then you have to contend with that a lot. All right, I think we covered everything. And remember, okay, in my opinion, having a bad buddy is just as bad, if not worse, than not having a buddy at all. And this is why, again, I solo dive most. All right, take care, guys, and dive safe.